Hey guys, Max here. So I just had a pretty worrisome event just happened to me as I was flying back home. My drone just plummeted out of the air due to a battery error. Yep, this was me three weeks ago. This little incident really taught me not to fly my DJI Mavic with swollen or puffed batteries. Actually, it landed right here. It was pretty easy to find. After the crash, visually nothing seemed wrong with the drone, but after powering it up, instantly I could tell I wasn't getting any video feed and I had no control over the gimbal whatsoever, which led me to the conclusion that it would be the gimbal flex cable and the video signal cable, which are the two things you'll see me replacing in this tutorial. At the same time, during this intricate repair, I'll try my best to guide you through step by step on how to fix your own Mavic's camera gimbal unit. Since I can't show you how I took this drone apart as I didn't film that, you'll just see its reassembly which is the most crucial part. So to the left here are the two replacement cables which I just got in the mail. This is the 4k cameras signal cable and the flexible PCB gimbal ribbon cable. And on the table here I have the rest of the gimbal unit all disassembled. I also organized and labeled any screws that I took out. To start out I'll show you how to replace the video signal cable and then we'll move on to the gimbal motor cable. Cutting it out of its bag, here is the video signal cable at its full length. To slide the camera off of its gimbal enclosure, you're going to need to unscrew the two screws on each side of the camera. Careful not to lose them. With the screws out by hand, it's still pretty tough sliding the camera off, but wedging the gap with a thin blade makes it slide right off. When it comes to unclipping the video signal cable from the camera, avoid using anything with a sharp pointed tip, but instead use something like a flat headed screwdriver. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but you can actually see the damage on the old video signal cable right here, where one of the strands got ripped. With the new cable out, keep in mind that the even or straight looking end goes to the camera sensor and the lopsided end connects back to the circuit board. Connecting the brand new cable up to the camera, all it takes is a gentle push for it to clip in. Then you're going to want to slide the camera sensor back on to its mount in the gimbal and then fasten the two screws on either side. Then you're going to attach one of the few plastic panels to keep the cable straight and pointing out the back, while being very careful not to pinch any of the strands coming from the cable. So here we have the new gimbal motor flex cable. One by one, as we're installing it, we're going to need to remove these little blue strips of tape which reveal all the sticky parts. First, you're going to remove the old gimbal flex cable by starting out with the very last motor and working your way out disconnecting each connector one by one in their order. First, disconnecting the roll motor connector, the yaw motor connector, and last, the pitch motor connector. Before unclipping each connector, be sure to remove any black silicon that may be in the way. If your gimbal appears to use any little pieces of tape, then be sure to keep those. Here's the old gimbal flex cable, and to the side is the new one which we'll be replacing it with. It's very important that you use the old flex cable as a reference to its bending points, because you just can't trust the marked points on the new cable. It would be pretty confusing not having the old one there as reference. There we go, having the new one adapted accordingly, it's pretty much ready for installing. And just in case for the future, let's remove this code sticker from the old one and stick it onto the new cable's main connector. Here comes the time to install the new cable. It's very important that you push the last of the small connectors through this little hole and then prepare the middle section's adhesive part, pushing it down further into the gimbal where it should rest. Make sure the midsection connector creates a U-shaped loop down in the gimbal. This can be seen from below. Once that part is seated in place, this connector here should stick forward, and then it'll be bent around, forming a U-loop. It should go around, appearing in the rear of the gimbal, and connect to the roll motor. It's important to press down a few times, making sure each connector is seated in place. Now with the roll and yaw motors connected up to the circuit, it should look something like this. Peeling away the last adhesive section on this cable, you're going to curve and mount this intersective part onto the top of the gimbal. 
and don't worry about this part overlapping as that is necessary. Make sure you connect up the pitch motor while pushing down really well, secure the piece of tape on, and gently press down on this overlapping intersecting part. So now that completes the cable replacement part of the repair. To the left we have the previous damaged cables which we took out. Although another thing needs to be done on this gimbal and that's for the video signal cable to be redirected throughout this gimbal while securing the panels back on. Once again secure everything with care so that the video signal cable does not get pinched. Once all the panels are secured back in place with the two cables sticking out from the top, let's reattach the gimbal's metallic mounting plate to the top. When doing this, be sure to poke through the gimbal's cable through this little slot. Next, the gimbal with its bracket gets reattached to this mount which the circuit board is sitting on through these rubber shock absorbing bands. It was pretty tricky slipping on these little rubber doodakies on. Now that the gimbal unit is back in one piece, let's connect its new cables to the circuit board. Now it's all about reinstalling this fixed gimbal unit back into the drone. It's important to make sure that power connector is also poked through. Secure the gimbal mount to the front of the drone with its four screws and then reconnect all of those connectors back onto the board, including the front vision sensors and the other two information cables that lead back to the motherboard. Also don't forget to hook up the gimbal's power cable. Now let's plug in the Mavic Pro's battery to see if the gimbal unit works. That's a good sign. The gimbal's all working. Or so it seems to be. We gotta see that we can control it. And now, I'm gonna connect the controller to it and see if there's any video feed. With the RC connected to the drone and the DJI GO app set up on the phone, we are actually getting video feed. Up on the screen, you can see it's giving me a system warning and that error means that the obstacle avoiding sensors in the front don't work. So I won't have obstacle avoidance, but everything else should work. Since I'm a manual drone operator, I realized how little I used the obstacle avoiding sensors anyway. So I decided to take a pass on buying those expensive replacements for now. After checking that your gimbal unit works, be sure to clip your GPS module in place before snapping on the top cover. Then and screw everything back together. Clipping the battery on, there's just one more thing and that is to attach the propellers in place. Now we're ready to fly. Oh sweet, I now have video feed and full control over the gimbal again.
guys, to wrap up this video, I'm very glad that I got this drone back up and running. This has been my main tool and toy lately, so it would have been pretty sad to see it just sit in the cupboard and dust away. With this tutorial, I hope that I helped you and got you ahead in fixing your Mavic Pro drone, assuming you're watching this as well with a broken Mavic. Good luck to those of you who are also trying to fix their drones. If you found this video informative or helpful, then please give it a like, share the video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. Follow me on Instagram, and I'll catch you around. Peace!